Okay, so we're back, and we uh, finished part one with um, talking about whether Ryan and Audrey's map scores are the same. And hopefully you came to the same conclusion as you did when we were talking about the baseball players. Yes, T14 is T14. However, the context matters because Ryan's score um, shows that he has an excellent grasp on the materials he's been taught in second grade and the material presented on his assessment from grades two through five. Now, Audrey's taking a different test. You know, she's taking the six plus test. So her score shows that she's doing just fine with her material presented in her classrooms and on her assessment with grades six and higher. So would, this is the question that always helps me really understand this. Would Ryan's RIT score be the same if he was accelerated to grade six and took the six plus test? Think about that for a second. Now, hopefully, um, when you thought about that, you thought, eh, he might be doing really well in second grade, but is just because he got a 214, does that mean that he's going to go get a 214 taking that six plus test? And the answer is no. I mean, he's is not he's not going to be able to perform the same on the on a whole different um, type of test. So even though the scores look the same, they're not. So uh, just to reiterate, the RIT scale is not a content scale. It's a difficulty scale. And the RIT score tells us the point on the scale where the student can answer about half the students, I'm sorry, half of the test items correct and half of them incorrect relative to the content that the student has taught in the classroom and what is given on the test. So just like Jose and Scooter's batting average tell us how well they hit relative to their league, Ryan and Audrey's RIT scores tell us how well they perform relative to the instruction they received and to the content that's being assessed. <clears throat> So RIT scores comparisons are most useful within a grade level where students are similarly instructed and assessed. So, um, you know, Ryan in grade two scored really well in the two through five test, but that doesn't mean that he's going to perform as well as Audrey in grade six on the same test. And it does not mean that he's ready for grade six content. And I think that that's a common misconception that a child is ready for that content or that they could go into that grade level and perform uh, just as well, and that's not the case. So remember, RIT scores measure difficulty, not content. That the points on the RIT scale, they indicate about half right, half wrong, and that they're best compared inside a single grade and test. So if you look, the reading and math are offered K2, 2, 5, and 6 plus. The science is offered 3, 5, and 6, 8. And then um, I think language is just 2 through 12. But, you know, like I said, the best thing to do is just compare them within a single grade and not try to go uh, across the grade levels to compare those. All right, so a few extra things um, about the MAP growth test. And this is something I learned in this position. I had never located this document or used it before, and I'm so glad I found it. Because um, the MAP tests are not timed. And so... You know, we can get into that into that computer lab and, and get frustrated when we see students that are just flying through and then also students that are taking way, 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 way longer. Um, you know, maybe just to get out of class, surely not, right? Or um, kind of, you know, inability to stay focused. So this time duration document is awesome because what it does is it gives you... Um, an average test duration for a certain uh, grade level or a certain test. So now, by no means is this uh, a strict requirement, and uh, we don't want to go in and just hammer down till students say have to do this, they have to do that. However, when you are looking at your scores, and and most certainly when you're proctoring and you're looking like where what you know how many questions is on here, how far has the student gone along. This might help you say, you know what, you're going to need to slow down. Or um, when you look at your test and a kid has uh, really gone down and you think, what in the world happened? Looking at that uh, test duration 
document can be extremely useful for you. So it says C handout. Now in the training, I did give the handout, but um, right here, this map growth is, um, if you'll look down here, it gives you a, a mean test duration. So um, anyway, that is a great, great resource. You can just go to the map website, type in that growth test duration PDF. Also, all of your principles have that um, PDF that they can share with you as well. So I encourage you to look at that. And uh, we always have students say, and I always want to know when I'm taking a test, how many questions? How many questions am I going to have? So if you'll look here, this gives you all of the information you need to know about the different tests. Um, the number of questions listed is an approximation because the actual number varies for each student as the system adapts. But most of it, um, most of these are going to be just, just right on. So it kind of helps you gauge if you know your test duration, helps you gauge uh, how your students are working in a timely uh, fashion. It also helps you just give students that, you know, this is where I'm going. This is how many questions I have. Um, and I always like to put that up on the board when I'm, when I'm proctoring the test too, just to let students know what the expectations are for the test. So if you want to know what are some example questions, what do they look like? Um, this link right here, let's see what happens when I click this link. Oh yeah, I'm already actually downloaded that. Um, this is a writ reference chart, so you can look this up if you are interested in seeing what these tests look like. Or I'm sorry, what some of these questions look like. So this gives you, you know, K, K through 2 math. It gives you like this is what a 131 would look like. This is what a more difficult question would look like, and it gives you in each um, content strand. So that's a nice reference for you to look through. So you can get an idea. Also, all three of these um, are awesome. Um, never really knew about some of these, so this is uh, excellent for you. Right here, these, these student test tools. Um, and especially now that we're starting to go through um, more of an internet-based and, and web-based testing, students have to know how to use these tools. So you can click any tool to begin. Like here's the highlighter. And if you, you could click to watch the video. Obviously my computer's not doing what needs to be doing right now. But uh, these are all, oh, here we go. Yeah, I'm an arm, so my internet's not so great. But I will tell you that, um, <laughs> oh, there it goes. That these are really, this is great. You could do this with your students before the test to kind of let them know what to expect. And, of course, that's up to you because we know that uh, maybe not all grade levels are ready for all of those tools yet. It may be more of a distraction than it is, um, you know, and, and that's up to you, obviously. But that is there, and that's helpful. Um, if you are a, a math teacher and you want to know more about the math, and the, um, I'm sorry, the calculators that are offered. Uh, this is a good link for you here. It shows, so you can practice with your students and just kind of let them know what the calculator looks like. And then last but not least, I really like this one. Um, this is the, pra the math practice test. So I like going and taking these two, just so I can kind of understand, you know, what is it like for these kids? So the, the username is grow, the password is grow. Also, you could take this as a class. You could let your students, uh -oh, okay. You could let your students take it. As you see, you can choose your grade, uh, the subject, the test language, and then you can go and take a practice test. So that's really good to do with your students too, to just to give them kind of an idea of what it was going to look like. All right, so uh, just so you know, in Muhlenberg County, students that re receive accommodations, they are not going to get them during the MAP test. And that is because this test is used to determine academic achievement level students rather than a test of mastery. This is not going in the grade book, and I want to make sure I, I make that clear. The, the MAP test score should not be in the grade book. It is not a grade. An effort grade, okay, but this is not a test for mastery. So we're not recording it. Students aren't going to, you know, their grades aren't going to reflect this. So just know that. Also, you can give a break during a test. 
by using the pause or suspend. And honestly, with your younger students, that is probably the best practice for you to do. Make sure your students have headphones, scratch paper, and a pencil. Make a seating chart in advance. Cannot tell you how important that is. You know that. You know, as teachers, it's it's like rocket science, but you do you do you can make some changes that will benefit your students. Uh, for example, if you know a student is really has a hard time focusing, you're going to want to put them in the front of the room where they can't see everyone else. Um, and the student test tools, use your discretion about which tools to uh, teach to your students to use. Uh, it's important to proctor the map test as you would the state test. Now, don't sit down. Don't take it as a time to grade papers or uh, talk with other teachers. But you need to be actively proctoring um, and like you would on any other test. Uh, clearly state your expectations before the test and do not let students draw, sleep, play games online after testing. I think we all know what's going to happen um, when you do that. One student's going to see it and all the other students are going to want to do it, and then so they may start clicking through so they can play a game. So I uh, encourage you to have your students take a book, and that's the only thing to let them do um, after the test. No laying down, nothing nothing at all that looks, um, <laughs> that's going to maybe make other students want to hurry up and finish. Uh, okay, so I'm going to do this kind of quickly. Uh, every homeroom teacher has a map account. Um, your username is your uh, email. If you don't know your password, you can contact any in the tech guys and let them know. And like I said, I'm going to kind of fly through this. This isn't the, the main part of this training. But when you go to the home page and you, you're going to click here, Map Growth Reports, you're going to see all of these different types of reports. <coughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I've got my dog. <laughs> he just saw somebody outside. Um, okay. Shh. Uh, <coughs> I encourage you to try to log in to get your password to look at these reports. They're very, very helpful. And um, at another point, I will do a training that focuses more on how to use those reports um, to help uh, change your instruction um, and to meet students' individual needs and to uh, communicate with families. So uh, if you have any questions about any of this or would like any help, uh, please email me. This is my email address, and I'll be happy to uh, get in touch with you and help you with whatever you need. I hope that you have learned um, a few things you didn't know about map testing today. And um, if you ever have any questions about anything intervention related um, or anything to do with the map test or fast bridge, any of those kind of things, please um, reach out to me. That's my job. I'm, I'm here to help you, and I'm always happy to do it. So thank you for joining us today, and I hope uh, you have a great rest of the day.